behalf of the Theodore Roosevelt Association, we'd like to give to you a gift as a measure of our appreciation for your generous hospitality today. However, in trying to select an appropriate gift, we encountered some of the ubiquitous government regulations that seem to plague us in our life. <laughs> Evidently, it turns out that no government official, at least no federal government official, may accept a gift for its personal use whose value exceeds $25. <laughs> Despite the wondrous things that your administration has done to reduce the rate of inflation, $25 would scarcely buy a bag of jelly beans. <laughs> Therefore, we chose to give you something whose value is symbolic, a bust of Theodore Roosevelt. It was executed, or the bronze statue from which this was made, was executed by a noted Russian artist Lev Jarinsky, Jarinsky, who was an early admirer of Theodore Roosevelt, and he fled Russia shortly after the Communist Revolution and came to this country, where one of his first works was this statue, which I think bears a very good likeness to Theodore Roosevelt. At this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. William Johnson, who was the president of the Theodore Roosevelt Association. William is an engineer, an aerospace <laughs> President, senior members of the White House staff, members of the Roosevelt family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is a proud and happy day, and this is an important and joyous moment, as this great treasure, the Nobel Peace Prize Medal, awarded to President Theodore Roosevelt in 1906 for ending the terrible Russo-Japanese War, is returned to you, Mr. President, and through you to the American people for display in the White House. This magnificent gold medal represents a triumph of peace achieved against seemingly hopeless odds by American diplomatic skill and superb American statesmanship. It's most appropriate, Mr. President, that today is Theodore Roosevelt's birthday and the beginning of the year-long celebration of the 125th anniversary of his birth as we turn this medal over to you. And it's a real joy and satisfaction to present it to you, President Reagan, to present it to you who receives this medal for your commitment to achieving world peace through national strength makes you the direct spiritual heir of Theodore Roosevelt. The story of how this medal came here today is of great interest. Russia and Japan went to war in 1904. The Japanese had achieved a great victory at Fort Arthur in Manchuria. And the Russian Baltic fleet was sent on a revenge mission, an incredible voyage down the coast of the Atlantic, around Africa, across the Indian Ocean, and up through the Straits of Japan. Vowed to go on to the death, it was then that the strong and daring American president, Theodore Roosevelt, stepped in with an offer to mediate. Leave. President Theodore Roosevelt brought the representatives of the Russians and Jap Japanese together on the presidential yacht Mayflower Tsar, proposing the exact conditions that were finally settled on. Only a man of strength and courage, the first prize ever won by an American, in a very real sense then, TR's Nobel Prize, this prize, was recognition that the United States had come way to receive money for making peace would be too much like liberation. where it shall be, now for the first time, publicly and from here on, displayed. I had quite a shock the other day when I looked at the schedule. You know, there's, I'm, there's someone that always tells me 
each day what I'm going to be doing every 15 minutes the next day. And I looked at the schedule and it said, receive the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> I am honored on behalf of the nation to receive this award and I know that as you told us it has never before been displayed publicly and I'm pleased to be honorary chairman of the celebration marking the 125th anniversary of his birth. You know, Mr. Johnson, I still have your books to read <laughs> but um, by a coincidence when we first moved into the White House and discovered all the literary treasures that go with this public housing, <laughs> I found myself reading a book uh, by one Edmund Morris. It was uh, The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt. And it was some time into the book before I discovered that by further coincidence, Nancy was reading Edith Kermit Roosevelt, <laughs> the first lady by Sylvia Morris. The, I learned there that the image of the Rough Rider, the image of the some supposed bellicose uh, man, um, didn't really fit the complexity of that, that character. The seven and a half years of President, uh, we were at peace. And there was the role that you described in his ending of the Russo-Japanese War. Here was a man who could discuss the medieval period with historians or be equally comfortable talking about cutting horses with the cowpokes. He's uh, it just, well, let me read a paragraph from the proclamation that I'm going to sign here to conclude my participation. I think it says it better than anything that I have said. Born with considerable physical handicaps, Theodore Roosevelt overcame his afflictions and drew strength from his triumph over personal adversity, a strength he would later devote to the public good. Through sheer willpower, he became a rugged outdoorsman and active conservationist, the organizer of the Rough Riders, a fearless crusade against corruption and for law and order an explorer, a social reformer and author, our youngest president. That's funny, I'm the oldest. <laughs> and the first of our citizens to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. He was truly an American Renaissance man. His life was a voyage of discovery, guided by deep principle and private morality. Well, I believe this year of celebration will increase the people's knowledge of President Roosevelt's contributions to American life, such as that prize, the complexities of this man, and you can be sure that we will display it, as I say, with honor. And let me add, I will pursue peace with the same vigor and resolve that he lived his life, and see if we can't make that our contribution to a very troubled world. And now, I'm going to sit down and sign that proclamation. Matter of fact, what I should say is, I'm going to sign that bully proclamation. <laughs>